Hello, I'm Kathy Malone, Program Officer at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Welcome to our celebration of the winners of the 2021 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Award for Health Equity. We are thrilled that you are with us today as we recognize 11 individuals who in their communities and throughout the country undertake the difficult work of systems change to achieve health equity. The award winners we celebrate today are committed to making systems more relevant and accessible. They are committed to giving those within their communities who are vulnerable and underserved a fair and just opportunity for health and well-being. I believe that you will find their stories compelling, their work to be game-changing, and how they approach systems change to be inspiring and encouraging to us all. I am pleased to say that the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Award for Health Equity is now in its sixth year, and I'm very proud to say that we are now 65 award winners strong. At the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, we believe that regardless of class, race, ethnicity, financial means, or life circumstances, everyone should have a fair and just opportunity to be healthier. We, along with thousands of others, have embarked on an ambitious goal to build a culture of health. Building a culture of health is not an aspiration, it is our conviction. We invite all who are committed to advancing health equity to join us in this movement. In a few minutes, we will introduce the 2021 award winners and tell you their stories. Before that, however, I want to tell you a little more about the grantee organizations that bring this award program to life and let you know that later in our program, we will hear from Fiona Kanaga Singham, Vice President of Equity and Culture at Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, who will share the foundation's vision to achieve a national culture of health that is grounded in health equity. Also with us today is Joe Costello, RWJF's Director of Digital Communications, who will join me in presenting the awards. Nine national organizations are critical to the success of the Award for Health Equity program. These organizations share our vision for building a culture of health and advancing health equity in the nation. Each year, they identify caring leaders and systems changers within their networks to receive the Award for Health Equity. Our thanks go to AIDS United, whose mission is to end the HIV epidemic in the United States. Asian and Pacific Islander Caucus for Public Health, who is the vision and voice of public health and health equity for Asian and Pacific Islanders. Community Campus Partnerships for Health, who promotes health equity and social justice through partnerships between communities and academic institutions. Hispanics in Philanthropy, who works to strengthen Latinx equity, leadership, and influence. Leading Age, who seeks an America that is free from ageism. The National Association of Free and Charitable Clinics, whose mission is to solely focus on the needs of the medically underserved. The National Civic League, who advances civic engagement to create equitable, thriving communities. The National Recreation and Park Association, who is dedicated to building strong, vibrant, and resilient communities through the power of parks and recreation. And Youth Move National, who is devoted to improving services and systems for youth and young adults. We are extremely grateful to the Award for Health Equity grantees for their commitment to health equity and the success of this program. It gives us great honor to recognize the 2021 award winners these 11 individuals bring true meaning to the intent of the award, to use the tools of systems change to increase health equity. Let's now meet the award winners and learn about the opportunities they saw, the challenges they met, and how their commitment to systems change moved their communities closer to health equity. Joe, please tell us about Dr. Joyce Javier. Thank you, Kathy. Within many cultures, discussions around mental health are uneasy. Families are often unsure about seeking mental health services. Mental, emotional, and behavioral issues are all too common among young people from all cultural groups and backgrounds. This is especially true for young people within the Filipino community, where issues have contributed to a rising incidence of serious and fatal mental health-related problems. 
Dr. Joyce Javier believes that intervening early can help Filipino families and young people thrive through adolescence and into adulthood. She is a general pediatrician at Children's Hospital Los Angeles and associate professor of clinical pediatrics at the Keck School of Medicine of the University of Southern California. With the goal of reducing mental health disparities among Filipino youth, she spearheaded the Filipino Family Health Initiative, a nationally recognized program. The organization delivers the Incredible Years, a program directed to Filipino immigrant families as a prevention tool for the development of mental health problems in adolescence. Informed by community-based participatory research, she implements a systems change approach to the mental health issues that plague young people in the Filipino community. The Filipino Family Health Initiative treats parents as experts in their families and promotes positive parenting tools, encourages parents and youth to learn from one another, offers intergroup feedback on parenting practices, teaches parenting strategies that bridge Filipino and Western values, partners with parents, grandparents, school districts, churches and community organizations, teachers, medical and mental health practitioners and government agencies. The initiative constantly reincorporates feedback from parents, recruits parents to serve on a community advisory board for the program, and offers workshops to parents of youth ages zero to 12 years old and has expanded to other communities, including Spanish-speaking families. The incredible years offered in community-based settings has positively impacted several behavioral health outcomes known to be risk and protective factors for adolescent mental health disorders. Dr. Javier, thank you for your research leadership, and taking system-changing approaches to addressing adolescent mental health in the Filipino community. Many young people, immigrant and American-born, will benefit from your groundbreaking efforts. We thank you on behalf of Asian and Pacific Islander Caucus for Public Health and for all of us at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Congratulations on your 2021 award for health equity. Kathy, please tell us about Teresa Molina and Javier Alegre. A behavioral health care system that does not provide culturally and linguistically responsive services to the population it is charged to serve has serious limitations. For people served by this system, these limitations present barriers to achieving optimal mental health and addressing substance use disorders. There is an urgent need for cultural and linguistic responsive services to improve behavioral health and well being among Latinos and other culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Salt Lake County, Utah has one of the fastest growing Latino populations in the United States. Latino behavioral health services is shifting the behavioral health model in Utah from a focus on mentally ill individuals to working with the community and having a holistic concern for the individual, the family, and the community. Dr. Teresa Molina is Associate Director at University Neighborhood Partners and Assistant Professor at the University of Utah. Javier Alegre is Executive Director of Latino Behavioral Health Services. Latino Behavioral Health Services designs cultural and linguistic responsive awareness, empowerment, recovery, and treatment of mental health and substance use disorders. This is done using a community-based context that connects people to people and resources to empower each other, including housing, employment, citizenship, and nutrition, among so many other identified assets and needs. Through the lens of social and economic justice, Teresa Molina and Javier Alegre are shifting the behavioral health model in Utah in significant ways. They are undertaking the work of systems change to affect mental health and substance use disorder outcomes in culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Latino Behavioral Health Services works in collaboration with multiple institutions and organizations. Among them are the University of Utah Health, Salt Lake County, University Neighborhood Partners, the University of Utah, the state, 
cities, and many other local community organizations. Together with these partnerships, they have conducted a gap analysis and made recommendations for improving access and making mental health services more equitable. They've conducted a resource mapping project, identifying the deep systems that affect the level at which a community thrives. Maps that will guide countywide public health efforts. They've inspired the development of the cultural navigator positions that bridge institutions and communities. They've engaged in advocacy at city and state levels to drive investment in training community leaders and support for community involvement in behavioral health. They've created opportunities to become certified in paraprofessional roles like a peer support specialist, family resource facilitator, or case manager. And they've served as the University College of Social Work placement site for social work practicum courses. Dr. Molina and Mr. Alegre, you are bringing desperately needed innovative approaches to the field of behavioral health. Thank you for your commitment to culturally responsive, equitable mental health services. On behalf of the Community Campus Partnerships for Health and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Joe, can you tell us about Alana Steinhauer? For many living in our nation's more rural areas, there can be multiple barriers to quality health care, from being uninsured or underinsured to having limited access to transportation. Even filling out excessive paperwork can be an obstacle. In these circumstances, patients' needs must be assessed holistically, not only medical, dental, and nutritional needs, but any issues that affect health such as housing, employment, education, legal, environmental, transportation, personal safety, or other needs. This is the approach of the Volunteers in Medicine Berkshires, a free clinic in which 80% of the 1,300 patients are minority immigrants, mainly from Latin America and Brazil. Ilana Steinhauer is the Volunteers in Medicine Berkshires Executive Director. She is a thought leader and role model, driving a vision and building a culture based on the organization's first core value, which is equity. Ilana's approach is human-centric, patient-centric, and service-centric. It is designed to drive better outcomes and give clients equal opportunity to achieve good health. This holistic approach can be accurately described as systems change. Volunteers in Medicine Berkshires has a small paid staff and over 70 volunteer healthcare providers and 100 volunteer interpreters, drivers, and other support personnel. The organization recruits staff and volunteers who are representative of patients, creating trust and understanding. Here are some of the patient-centric ways the organization operates. During the intake process, patients are assigned both a service and a clinical case worker. These professionals work with patients to address transportation issues, assess needs, and make connections related to housing, employment, education, and children, explain appointments and why checkups are important, describe how and when to use the emergency room, and clarify how to fill and manage prescriptions. Interpreters help patients with navigating the system. School system liaisons help parents advocate for their children's health and education. Volunteers provide over 1,000 rides per year to get patients to and from clinical appointments, even appointments with specialists hours away. VIM Berkshire's clinical capacity is extensive and includes internal medicine, dental, behavioral health, women's health, integrative pain management, nutrition, and specialty care. The BASIC program brings together different organizations that are working to make it easier for immigrants to thrive in their communities. Breaking the Ice brings together several hundred members of the community to discuss challenges and how to overcome them. These services relieve stress, increase visits, and empower and engage the community. 
Alana, thank you for your efforts to eliminate barriers and to build new channels to relevant health and social services that work for those in your community most affected by health disparities. On behalf of the National Association of Free and Charitable Clinics and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Kathy, why don't you tell us about our next award winners, Anika Taluri and Sanjana Budi. Social stigma associated with menstruation is one of the major contributors to period poverty. Period poverty is a serious issue that has a grave impact on the health, dignity, and self-worth of girls and young women. Yet it is severely under-addressed. Girls and women who do not have access to affordable and effective menstrual products hygiene education, or safe sanitation facilities are experiencing period poverty. The experiences regarding menstruation for those Americans living in poverty are comparable to people in low and middle income countries. Menstrual products are costly in the US, which creates affordability issues for teens and can contribute to missed time in class. Pure Youth Femme seeks to eliminate the struggle of period poverty. Anika Taluri and Sanjana Budi lead Pure Youth Fem, a menstrual health and awareness program. Pure Youth Fem works to dismantle the social stigmas and taboos associated with women's biology, provide menstrual hygiene products to students in impoverished schools, empower young women, and stop the devaluing of the biological process of menstruation. They are working to change perceptions towards a natural biological process. These perceptions devalue humans, keep kids from school, women from work, and stunt a culture's growth and social and economic development. They are working to change a deeply ingrained system of health inequity. Pure Youth Fem volunteers visit schools in impoverished areas to destigmatize the natural function of menstruation. They work for equality of access to menstrual supplies and actively advocate for the inclusion of trans teens in their campaigns. They sponsor initiatives to provide water tanks, sinks, toilets, emergency supplies of pads and incinerators to schools in impoverished areas. They promote economic development initiatives and educational initiatives designed to support local schools. They manufacture biodegradable and reusable menstrual hygiene products, and they employ impoverished women, many of them widows unable to provide for their families and send their children to school. Anika and Sanjana, you have taken on a serious issue steeped in centuries of misunderstanding, layers of misinformation, and historical and present day inequities. Thank you for your efforts to bring sustainable solutions to achieve health equity. On behalf of Youth Move National and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 RWJF Award for Health Equity. Joe, our next winner is Erica Thrash Soul. Please tell us about her. We all aspire to live as long as we can, as independently as we can, as healthy as we can. For some, these aspirations for healthy longevity can nearly be impossible to achieve. This is the case for many older adults living with insufficient financial resources, limited family and social support, serious physical limitations or debilitating health, all of which can deplete psychological resilience and well being. At McFarland Villages, an affordable housing community for older adults in Flint, Michigan, over 50% of the residents live below the poverty line. For these residents, McFarland Villages is a hub of support. Erica Thrash Saul is Executive Director at Flint, Michigan's McFarland Villages. She has created a continuum of care to maximize the quality of life for residents aging in poverty with significant physical and behavioral health needs. With the mission to help adults live independently as long as possible, Erica is driving a mission that is grounded in the work of systems change. Building its foundation of affordable housing, McFarland Villages, 
partners with social and medical organizations to help McFarland residents obtain high quality services regardless of income, has developed a senior health center on McFarland's affordable housing campus, fostering a culture of health and wellness for both residents and older adults in the larger Flint community, provides access at no charge to outside community events and wellness activities that encourage autonomy and keep residents active and engaged, elevating morale and psychological well being. Welcomes anyone interested in working with older people to engage with the McFarland Village's community. Adamant that people aging in poverty cannot afford to neglect their health, McFarland Village's focus is on helping residents manage chronic conditions like diabetes, with the understanding that catastrophic outcomes for these conditions are not inevitable. Erica, you have made it your mission to increase healthy longevity and offset the devastating impact of health and wealth disparities. We are thankful for the foresight, insight, and dedication you bring to this work. On behalf of Leading Age and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Kathy, tell us about the next award winner, Susan Rubio Rivera. Domestic violence and sexual violence have devastating impacts on the lives of victims, families, and communities. These acts of violence go underreported for many reasons fear, shame, dependency on the abuser, and the lack of knowledge on how to seek protection and access support. Muher is a one-stop domestic violence and sexual violence center that offers a holistic approach to healing and protecting the safety and well-being of victims of domestic and sexual violence. Serving predominantly Hispanic lower income residents, Muher brings culturally aligned services to Miami-Dade County and the rural and agricultural communities across South Florida. Their goal is to help victims become survivors and ultimately thrive. Susan Rubio Rivera is founder and executive director of Muher, Mujeres Unidas en Justicia, Educación y Reforma. She has a 27 year track record as a leader in health equity by advocating for domestic violence and sexual violence survivors and their families. Working to strengthen the Latino leadership voice, Susan believes that people hold the answers to many of their problems. This client centric full scope approach to supporting survivors of domestic and sexual violence is a model of systems change. Muher provides support in any way possible to help victims become survivors and thrive despite the traumatic effects of abuse. It offers individual and family counseling, therapy, advocacy, and emotional support, physical and emotional needs assessments, legal services and immigration services for battered immigrants, crisis counseling, a 24-7 helpline, safety planning, and accompaniment, victims' compensation application filings and relocation assistance, individual and group counseling to children ages five to 16 who have been exposed to domestic violence or sexual abuse, an emergency assistance program for families who are experiencing unusual hardships. It helps with emergency shelter, utilities and rent and food certificates and outreach to laborers in the workplace on a broad range of healthcare issues, in addition to information on support for victims of sexual and domestic abuse. Muher empowers individuals through advocacy and access to information on how to report sexual or domestic violence and seek protection, as well as overcome lack of information on how to find effective and affordable therapy or other treatment to help with overcoming the experience of these types of violence. Susan, your comprehensive approach has improved outcomes for survivors of domestic and sexual violence. Thank you for giving abuse survivors and their families a path forward. On behalf of Hispanics in Philanthropy and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Joe, please tell us about Brenda Flowers Dolly. 
HIV and AIDS treatment programs with limited connection to hard to reach communities have little impact reaching people in those communities, building trust with them or providing healthcare benefits to them. This is particularly the case for those living in communities where many are experiencing homelessness, mental illness, substance use disorders, while living with HIV and AIDS. It is hard to get people to trust a system that does not see them, hear them, or understand them, even when they are most in need. Brenda Flowers Daly works in the trenches in the fight against HIV and AIDS. She forges pathways to people rather than hoping that those who don't trust or know how to navigate the system seek treatment out for themselves. Brenda is founder and CEO of Rising Against All Odds, the organization's name that reflects her own life experiences. Through a lens that centers on the needs of those most in need, Brenda's focus is that of systems change. Rising Against All Odds is based in Deland, Florida, an indispensable pillar of the city's social and care services, Rising Against All Odds, provides home visits for HIV testing to minimize stigma, conducts mobile testing units to bring tests to the homeless and to the underserved areas, partners with providers and pharmacies to reduce medical costs and bring down costs of treatment and wait time for treatment, connects those who are homeless and living with HIV to transitional housing, provides assistance with finding permanent housing, Rising Against All Odds creates links to quality, accessible treatment and support services for healthier choices. Brenda, thank you for increasing access to treatment services for those living with HIV and AIDS. Through culturally based and reality based approaches, you are truly working to help those you serve rise against all odds. On behalf of AIDS United and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Kathy, please tell us about Melissa Robinson, our next award winner. There are significant disparities in birth outcomes based on race and or ethnicity. Improvements in healthcare quality and access have not eliminated these disparities. Preterm birth, low birth weight, and infant mortality continue to disproportionately affect black and poor infants in the United States. The causes and contributing factors for racial disparities in health outcomes are deeply rooted, substantial, and cumulative. The Community Baby Shower developed by the Black Healthcare Coalition in Kansas City offers expectant families a deep reservoir of social, psychological, and health support. 98% of the babies born to participating families are a healthy birth weight, drastically reducing their chances of infant mortality. Melissa Robinson is the president of the Black Healthcare Coalition. Elevating the urgency of addressing health inequities, she works to reestablish National Black Health Week throughout the United States. She is driving a strategy to empower the community to take its rightful and powerful place in eradicating health inequities. As a champion for health equity, Melissa works to change systems by centering Black experiences in the design of health solutions. Here are some of the Black Healthcare Coalition's most notable accomplishments. Conducting community baby showers to improve healthy birth rates and reduce infant mortality through a holistic, community-based case management approach that addresses all of the social determinants of health. Establishing health literacy stations in churches, barber shops, beauty salons, grocery stores, and libraries. Designing health and social interventions, such as Aging with Grace, that focuses on seniors, social isolation, brain health, and heart health. Partnering with the University of Kansas Alzheimer's Disease Center to increase requirements for African American trial participation. Working to eradicate the denial of public health benefits for parents wishing to participate in 529 savings plans for the future education of their children. And working to reduce the stigma of mental health 
through Mental Health Matters in an effort to expand mental health to underserved groups. Melissa, the awareness you have built and the changes you have ushered in to improve birth and other health outcomes are significant. Thank you for your endless effort to lift the message of the importance of empowering your community. On behalf of the National Civic League and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Joe, please tell us about Emily Harmeyer. Children and families living in food deserts, areas where it is difficult to buy affordable and nutritious food, are at greater risk for obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. The lack of education about nutrition and healthy eating only adds to these problems. There are an estimated 16,000 children in Louisiana's Caddo Parish who are food insecure. For families and children, addressing food insecurity is urgent and essential to achieving health equity. Emily Harmeyer is Program Director of Shreveport AmeriCorps Program and formerly of the Mobile Market Program at Shreveport Green in Shreveport, Louisiana. Faced with 24 classified food deserts in Shreveport alone, she's transformed the traditional garden into vital community resources for nutrition, health education, improved academic performance, and richer civic engagement and social connection. The Shreveport team led by Emily has led the creation and revitalization of 23 community gardens, developed a comprehensive nutrition and gardening curriculum, and has disseminated this curriculum to thousands of children in the community. Additionally, through the Mobile Market Program, Emily has cultivated partnerships with more than 40 community organizations, from local restaurants to civic groups, to elder care and healthcare providers, to bring fresh produce to the people of Shreveport's food deserts. Almost 80% of child participants in Shreveport Green Community Gardens gain knowledge of nutrition. Through her leadership, Shreveport Green is systematically diminishing the inequities perpetuated by food deserts. Since 2016, Shreveport has served over 600 food insecure children in Caddo Parish annually. The program enables children and their families to receive fresh produce from the gardens, enhances hands-on gardening activities and encourages physical activity, offers cooking, taste testing, and nutrition lessons, helps children make a connection to the natural world, provides for community gathering spaces, and enhances ecosystem services and biodiversity. Additionally, Shreveport Green's mobile market brings many farmers markets to the people, has served an estimated 1,500 to 2,000 food insecure individuals annually, with a total of more than 10,000 pounds of produce each year. Emily, you have made a significant impact in making families and children more food secure. You aspire to make fresh fruits and vegetables accessible to people in all areas of Shreveport. The National Recreation and Park Association and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation thank you for your dedication to reduce harm for those living in food deserts. On behalf of both of our organizations, congratulations on your 2021 Award for Health Equity. Thank you to all of our 2021 award winners. You show us that systems change is the work of building and dismantling, bridging and disrupting, instructing and empowering. We have learned through you that systems change is being insistent and patient, being a champion and a partner, and having the courage to forge ahead. And now, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Vice President for Equity and Culture, Fiona Kanaga Singham. Thank you, Kathy, and many thanks to everyone who's watching. I'd like to start by congratulating the winners of the 2021 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Award for Health Equity, and to extend my deep appreciation to all of you. 
Thank you for the work you do to change systems so that the people and communities you serve have more equitable opportunities to live healthier lives. Here at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, we support work that identifies, illuminates, and addresses structural barriers to health and health equity. These barriers include structural racism, other forms of discrimination, and social factors that impact health. You have taken on the urgent and difficult work of systems change to achieve health equity. And you have made incredible inroads, improving the everyday lives of people and communities, advancing innovative approaches to services and care. Taking on systems change work means addressing harms that are deeply rooted in our nation's history and in the many systems from healthcare to housing harms that are not just historical, but continue to impact the health and well-being of communities. Systems change means acknowledging and then working to eliminate barriers that have stood in the way of equity and justice for generations. It means challenging the status quo with courage, tenacity, and humanity. You're building bridges to connect the disconnected to serve the underserved and marginalized, and to build new paths to health and well being for everyone. You are shifting mindsets and building skill sets, and you are lifting up voices that have for too long gone unheard. You are doing the real work of systems change, and you are doing it because you know that our nation will never achieve health equity without changing our systems our policies, and our practices so that they work for the most marginalized. So thank you for keeping our communities at the center. Those who were once invisible, who may now be seen, counted, and heard. Those who are experiencing mental illness, who can now seek the care they need. And those living with disability, who can now share in healthy longevity and prosperity. When systems change, chronic diseases are held at bay, services become culturally responsive, communities become partners in research, harmed women become survivors, children become more food secure, babies are born healthy, and families are strengthened. When systems change, Structures that privilege some and disadvantage others are dismantled. People can become active participants in their health and unfair, unjust and preventable health disparities are replaced by equitable opportunities and resources, by quality care and by better outcomes for all. Thank you for carrying on this tremendous work and for keeping the dignity and humanity of people at the heart of everything you do. You are why we at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation believe systems change is possible and necessary, and why we believe that together we can build a national culture of health that ensures everyone has a fair opportunity to thrive. Congratulations on your award, and thank you for being our inspiration, for being part of the solution, and for being outstanding champions of health equity. On behalf of all of us at Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, thank you for joining us in our celebration and recognition of the 2021 winners of the RWJF Award for Health Equity. Look for interviews with the winners on RWJF's YouTube channel. These short video interviews are a great opportunity to learn more about the award winner's work, challenges, and lessons learned. We also invite you to join the movement to create a culture of health and learn more about the work of all of the award winners. Visit us at rwjf.org. Thanks to you all.